According to the ancient Chinese proverb, if you don't change direction, you'll end up where you're going. Good afternoon. We are Keaton's Consulting Group. Over the past three months, we've been working very closely together to create a group of recommendations which will address your revenue issues and your large expense problems. We're very excited this afternoon to present these recommendations to you. The recommendations we've created have been through the context of your mission statement, which is improving life in economically disadvantaged areas in Toronto. Despite the potential debt issues that your organization is facing, you're creating large social value throughout Toronto, and Keynes Consulting Group is very excited to be working with you and to have with you. Today's presentation will be divided into three segments. First, my colleague Alec will identify the problems and analyze them. Then, Chelsea will provide our recommendations. Finally, me, Doug, will provide the implementation plan and mitigation strategies against the risks that we have developed, that we have identified. And now, I'll pass it off to Alec. Thank you very much, Doug. I'm going to speak here today to first off discuss the problem of the organization. Now, I'm sure you're aware, the whole organization is aware, that last year you earned $3 million bucks. So we're here to address that. So the main reason behind that is increasing expenses and decreasing revenues throughout all of your programs. And that is leading to decreasing social profit, which in this third sector that you're in, that is a major problem, as social profit is your number one goal. So I'll get into the issues of the case. And moving in, decreasing social profit, there's three issues we have to recognize. The trust fund. This fund was developed as an endowment fund help your organization's work. It's not there as a reliance on funding, it's there as a backup and also for additional programs. In the last few years, you've been relying on that. So that's something that we've kept in mind throughout the presentation, how to rebuild that trust fund and not continue it any further. As well, program, programmatic unsustainability. Very few of your programs are bringing in a surplus. They're all in a deficit. Expenses are more than revenues. Now the goal of your organization is to provide that social profit to the low and middle income families in the Toronto area. So that is something that we have to realize. That is the first goal. But creating those, making those programs sustainable is important as well. As well as staff communication. Several groups here staff are unionized. We see that as a bit of a problem at the moment. As well, the staff are frustrated with the organization. They don't know if their jobs are secure. They don't know if the programs are secure. They want those programs to continue along. They know how important it is to the children and low income adults, as well as seniors that are going through those programs. So now we get into the analysis. The economy is growing out of recession, slowly, but it is steady, steadily growing, growing up. Around 2 to 3% growth estimated in Canada for the next year. So that is something to consider. The consumer, they have a low ability to pay. Your target audience is the low to middle income part of the community. So realizing that they can't afford expensive programs is important. The organization. Now this is from the Stanford Journal for Innovation. That you are a beneficiary of builder funding model in your organization. So you're relying on consumers to go through your organization and then at the end, return with donations. So the seniors are a perfect example of this. They've gone through, they've realized how important the programs are, and now they're giving back. Not somebody that you're relying on for funding to run some of your programs. Now moving into the options that you've considered today uh, over the past several months. A mortgage. To mortgage all of your properties, the interest costs are going to be about $220,000 per year. Now that works out to be a loss of 36,600 program days that you could offer. That's a big loss. Your number one goal is social profit. That's a big loss of social profit as far as we're concerned. The next option was closing cottage down. This is the epicenter of your community hub. Your administration space here, as well as many of your programs. Now, if you were to close Cabbage Town, you would gain about $6,610,000. The $6 million is from the sale. That's a one-time revenue that you're going to get. That's not going to be there year after year. It's going to be $610,000. Now you have to weigh the cost, losing 
23,000 program days that you're offering through that organization. Go through that center. What's going to be worth that? We consider the program days are definitely important. Finally, increasing program fees. Increasing from $5 up towards the market, the average market price of around $50. You have to make an increase somewhere in there to cover that deficit, leaning more towards the $50 end of the spectrum. So that's something to go back to the consumer, the ability to pay. So now, this is the non-profit program matrix from the book Nonprofit Sustainability. So basically, we've put all your programs together on here, rating impact versus revenue. Now, right now, most of your programs are in the heart category. High impact, low revenue. The community sees these as important, you see them. The goal here for us was to move some of your programs towards the star category. That's high impact still, but high revenue. Now that's moving some of the programs into that area. We're going to create all of them, make all the programs sustainable. As well, the donations from your fundraising campaigns are down in the money tree section. Low impact, but high revenue. We're going to try and move that to increase revenue. So now I'm going to pass it off to Chelsea, who's going to explain some of the recommendations that we've now obviously, coming up with one recommendation to find $3 million in the organization is well next to impossible. So we've prioritized cutting costs and increasing revenues, and Chelsea can explain that now. Thank you very much, Alex. Uh, it's been absolutely wonderful working with your organization over the past three months. As a nonprofit consulting group, we work with a lot of organizations in the third sector. Uh, I'd just like to start off by saying that you really do create a lot of social value uh, for the organization and for the communities that you, that you work in. Now saying that, there have been some problems with uh, the expenses of the organization. It's been tough to, to get enough. $3 million last year is a large amount. And as Alex said, we realized that there's no one way to bring in that $3 million. So my recommendation for you today, increase revenue, decrease costs. Wonderful. I know we've worked with lots of organizations who would say, sign me up, I want this right now. How do you do it? So today I'm going to tell you how exactly this is going to work. So to start off, I'm going to ask you to look into getting a one-time grant. Uh, the government has many of these right now, as well as many private foundations, to work towards operational excellence. Um, this will help cover some of the administrative costs that will likely come with some of the recommendations that we have for you. And this will help to make your organization more lean and more productive uh, and help you put these into place without having any additional costs for yourself. Our second recommendation, and it's something that you had mentioned uh, you were interested in, is having a more, uh, a larger fundraising campaign. Now currently you just have two staff members who are working in marketing, who are working with your current list. We think this needs to grow. So this will cost approximately $200,000 in the first year to implement but we'll bring in close to a million dollars in additional funding uh, based on the, the uh, estimation you had of 20 to 30 percent increase uh, in revenue per year. Uh, so that'll bring you about 800 thousand uh, dollars additionally each year. This takes us to getting you to get your two million dollars with me to my next one. We'd like you to rent out the space in your current facilities. Right now, some of the uh, some of the lo locations that you have are only being used to a certain extent. There are a lot more useful hours that could be used in those organizations. Um, so as you can see, we suggest that you go to about 85% capacity in each location. This still gives you room for growth, as we know it's important for your organization. Uh, assuming this would be about $8,000 per million dollar of revenue as for the real estate market in Toronto at the moment, this would bring you in approximately $346,560 per year. Now we're at about $1.7 million. Next slide, I'll bring this out of the car. Finally, uh, our, our next point would be to introduce tier pricing for childcare. Uh, in many of the communities that you're in, you do have a large number of middle income families who are using that service, and a large wait list of almost two times the amount of students you have in the program. Um, so we're suggesting to keep that lower price, keep the $5 for the people who really need it, but continuing on along with your mission. But to also increase two, or introduce two other pricing this would mean uh, you would have to gain some information from uh, your customers before they come in, what their income levels are, what the parents, where their parents are working, that sort of, uh, that sort of thing. Thirty dollars will still take you to about half of the current market value for child care, which is still great. It still continues your mission. But this will increase your revenues by nearly a million dollars per year, bringing us down to seven hundred fifty thousand. 
as the $584 to go. Next slide. Our final recommendation would be a sponsorship and a partnership with RDC, your current uh, banking solution right now. Um, and you do have that financial program, financial literacy. Right now it's only in one location. We would suggest bringing this into all four locations because it actually does bring in about $8,000 a year in the one location you have now. But currently it costs about $27,000 a year to implement. With RBC as a partner, you can partner with their financial advisors and have them come in instead of a staff member to put those programs into place. Um, we would also suggest uh, by bringing into the other facilities that would give you another $24,000 a year in revenue from additional people using the program. Uh, and as you've seen in the past from other organizations who partnered up with uh, companies like RBC, we um, would assume that we would be able to get approximately $30,000 in sponsorship from them as well. It's a win-win situation. They're looking great. We know they've done it in the past and as have many financial institutions. Uh, and it certainly helps us with our financial situation. 634-584 is our current number. Next slide, please. So this, this is the top one. We're suggesting that you cut some of your childcare staff at Haddish Town. Now, I know you've been in talks with them, and uh, they've said that they're not scared about losing their jobs. We know that they are scared about losing their jobs. Um, but in this situation, we believe to further your organization. Really, as a community hub, we feel everything needs to move on your organization. We need to have some else. So, uh, looking at the numbers, the number of staff you have for children, you can easily decrease two staff members at um, the Cabbage Town facility. This is bringing down more in line with the other facilities which are still doing really, really well with the two staff members that they have on board. Uh, this would be easier to this is $170,000. Four is our amount there. Lastly, and this is our final uh, thought for you today, I know it's been a lot to take in, so we'll recap it afterwards, um, would be to reduce the administration costs. Administration costs in the organization have nearly doubled since the last year, and they went up quite significantly in the year before that as well. Um, we're suggesting a uh, reduction by 10% uh, for in this next year. This would bring you back to about last year's level of costs plus inflation uh, and a little bit extra. This is always going to be some things that, that pop up. We're going to suggest doing this by implementing lean processes, fueling productivity in your organization. We really feel that um, by putting these lean processes all the way through, you'll be able to cut back a little bit so that it isn't noticed very much by the staff. The only thing that they're going to notice is that they're doing more with the time that they have. So that first grant that we were talking about, the operational grant, that will help cover costs to bring someone in who can help put together these leading processes. Um, there are definitely consulting companies, um, at Cadence Consulting, we can help you with this, and we'd be more than happy to find another company if you so be um, So this gives us a decrease of $500. $70,000, give or take, in the next 10 years. I'm going to pass you over now. Uh, sorry, I will first, next slide, go over this all in detail. And, and, uh, uh, to, to go over this for you, because I know it is definitely a lot to take in. So we're going to increase revenues by putting in tier pricing, leasing your excess space, putting a partnership and plan with RBC, and putting together the fundraising campaign that you've been wanting. We're also going to decrease Costs by cutting two staff uh, and by reducing your administration costs cost above the uh, cost of board. Now, there's a lot to do, um, so I'm going to pass you over Doug, to Doug now to talk about an implementation plan. How your organization can put this together with the help from us at Cadence Consulting to make this work for you. Thank you, Chelsea. As you can see, we're very, very excited about our recommendations, which will increase the efficiency of your organization and will really fuel the productivity of your third sector organization. So now I'll, I will show you our implementation strategy. To make the strategies, the recommendations that Chelsea said, really uh, easy to, to lay out for you and easy to put in place. Now, most of our recommendations actually will need to be implemented in the first quarter because there's a good deal of urgency. Uh, we are, there's a lot of expenses that are being built up as we speak today. In the first quarter, uh, it's all about communication. Communicating with the community. Communicating within the organization 
to make people understand what we're currently going through. All of the expenses that are being built up, the three million dollars that we need to that we need to get this year, and through this communication, we'll really uh, make people, make all of our stakeholders understand our financial situation and understand why we're putting in tiered pricing. In the first quarter as well, we will lease the inefficient space in our, in our four locations. Ideally, uh, we would find a tenant, uh, a non-profit, social profit tenant, who has a mission statement that is similar to ours. Ideally, however, that may not be possible, but uh, in a high traffic area in Toronto, it will not be difficult to quickly find a tenant for these spaces. In addition, in the first quarter, we will approach RBC and, and, uh, and propose this partnership, this sponsorship, um, that will provide the grant and the, the, the HR to make these uh, financial literacy programs that we already have in place, uh, place reducing costs. In the first year, we will create this, we will implement this donor fundraising campaign. Now this will be started in the first quarter, but it will take a little bit longer to implement. It will be throughout the year. And this is what Chelsea was describing with the $200, $200,000 uh, cost associated with it, but the, but the million dollars in increased uh, donor support, or the million dollars in donor support. We will seek out new donors while maintaining our existing donor base, and, um, and this will bring a great deal of revenue to the organization. And now I will address the risks that are associated with our recommendations. Tiered pricing. Now there is a lot of risk associated with this, so we'll tell you how to mitigate against this. First of all, the current customer base may be lost. There are people who cannot afford two extra dollars a day. From the five dollars to the seven, there are people that is sixty dollars a month. And what we say though is that already the, the government is giving tax benefits and benefits to these low income families of a hundred dollars. So an increase in $60, they were currently paying uh, a, a far less than that, so that will be still covered under the government benefits. Leasing the space, this is a very risk-free uh, recommendation, it really is. We maintain ownership of the building, we don't lose our rights to that, and we have revenue coming in, which will be mitigating against our cash flow problems. The RBC partnership, now, really, this partnership may not be viable. There's nothing set in stone saying that this will work. Um, however, at Katie's Consulting Group in the past many years, we have seen that RBC is, is very much into corporate sustainability and the triple bottom line approach, and we are very confident that they'll be able to provide uh, financial support of, of a small nature to your organization. Finally, this fundraising campaign, the tiered pricing policy may have damaged the donor support base. However, once the, the donors and our existing donor base sees that you, the management team, is incredibly and still committed to your mission statement, their support will not fail. Their support will not waver, seeing that you're still creating social profit and you're still uh, supporting your mission statement. So in conclusion, we'd like to reiterate that we would like you, we recommend to you, to create a partnership with RBC, to create a new um, fundraising campaign, to lease out your inefficient space, fueling productivity, and we would like you to remember that although these recommendations may seem to be a stretch, may seem to be difficult to implement, if you don't step out on a limb, you can't get the fruit. Thank you very much. Very good, thank you. Um, so, quick question. Uh, probably a tough one from a, a human standpoint and an admin standpoint, which you didn't really speak to, is how would you say to be a child if you're going to tier it in terms of income? We probably don't have that process in place today to get income verification, etc. What are your thoughts on how are we going to manage XYZ family versus the other family who gets to pay five and who gets to pay? So that certainly not an easy task. Of course, this is a big thing that we're asking you to implement. 
we see right now you have a one-tier pricing model, one tier right across across the board, and that's going to be a lot of, of things that you'll need to get from those families that you currently have and from new families going forward. Um, that operational grant that I was talking about, um, a bit of that uh, and uh, the admin person who would come along with that um, would be to put together an application package. So that would include not only financials, you know, how much is uh, how much are these families making, what uh, tier are they in of their income, um, but also the sector that they're in, uh, how the family is, do they have many children, what are their expenses like, do they have a large mortgage that they might not be able to pay, all of these sorts of things. But it's not just one thing that's deciding you pay $5, you pay 30 It's uh, a wide variety uh, and then would then fit them within one of those areas. Um, I Further two or three years down the road, we could look at That's not your question answered. 